Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'd first like to thank uh, Mr. Agarwal, Mr. Manchanda, and Mr. Arora for having me here. A couple of caveats right off the bat. I am not an in industry insider. I think you know that. Uh, I wondered why I was invited to speak here in the first place, but I guess um, the idea was probably to get an outsider's perspective of what is happening in the industry. Um, or how we see, how we would like to see, what we would like to see your industry doing. Um, the other important thing that I have to tell you is that the, the people gathered here in this audience, I see you as the top of the pyramid, the pinnacle of the pyramid, so to speak. There is a lot of this industry that is not represented in this room. And therefore, the comments that I'm going to make are not meant to be disrespectful towards you. But these are common comments for the entire industry. And uh, from an outsider's perspective, the industry would do well to consider some of the comments that I'm going to have. Um, if you look at converter convert, uh, capability that um, we are talking about today, the first thing that you will notice is that the products that the converters are offering are driven primarily by their capabilities. And if you look at the products that are being offered today, you would see that largely the industry is offering the same products that they were offering a decade ago, perhaps even two decades ago. So the products that you are offering or your industry is offering the customers, your customers, remain largely undifferentiated. Okay, so what party A is offering to their customers and what party B is offering is essentially the same things. Now, there are of course eminent exceptions and many of you are part of that exception. I see some of the things that have been discussed today which are completely outside this definition of the, the undifferentiated product. However, the bulk of the industry is outside this room and for them, they are unable to differentiate their product against their competitors. They are essentially selling the same product. They are essentially offering their customers the same product. I, I think Chitranjan also mentioned that in his opening remarks, that there are two things that are going to become fundamentally important for your industry, differentiation and segmentation. And I promise you that Chitranjan and I did not exchange notes when we were writing our presentations. Um, so, for that vast majority of your industry, there is largely, the, the, the business they are in is largely an undifferentiated commodity business. Even rice is not being sold as commodities anymore. There is rice and there is basmati rice, which, and basmati is sold at three times the price of regular rice. Um, when you compete on the basis of an undifferentiated product or a commodity product, you are, you are uh, competing on price alone. That is the one factor that you are competing on. And if A has to get his business, his price has to be less than that of B. So consequently, margins are low. And if margins are low, you have to keep your costs low. And everything has to be at low cost. Materials have to be at low cost. Human resources have to be at low cost. Capital equipment that you're buying has to be at low cost. Factory and facilities, safety, everything has to be at low cost. And having done all of that, having squeezed the last drop of blood out of your cost, your margins are still low. So, I have to hasten to tell you that price differentiation is not necessarily a bad thing. So, competing only on price is what, um, what free market economics is all about. So, it's not necessarily just a bad thing. The problem is when price is the sole differentiator. If it is the one thing on which you're competing, if it is the only thing on which you're competing, then everybody's margins are affected and some begin to co compromise on quality, delivery, support, and everything else that we have been talking about in this room over this last uh, few hours. Now, the customer does benefit from, from low price. There's no doubt about that. There are a lot of our customers who are constantly pressurizing you for better and better prices. However, in many situations, the customer bears several other costs, rejections, line stoppages, 
pro product returns, angry customers, strained relationships. And I'd like to suggest to you that this constant pressure on price is not the way life should be. It doesn't have to be that unpleasant. The first differentiator beyond price is something that we have already discussed over here, and that is quality. And it's not my position here to start giving you a lecture on quality. However, superior quality comes from three things. Superior performance, consistent performance, and predictable performance. If you can achieve these, you would have achieved what the customer is asking you to do. The Indian customers are increasingly focused on this. Many of them are willing to, mark the word many, okay, not all, but many, are, are willing to pay the price for this increased quality and um, enable you to give them a better product. <clears throat> The big, the big picture, however, is like this. Quality is a mindset. Quality doesn't happen unless the leadership of the company thinks quality. It flows from there. Otherwise, it doesn't flow at all. If the leadership is committed to quality, they will find means of constantly enhancing the quality of what they produce and take to their customers. However, let's just move on to a few other differentiators that the industry can use to enhance the value that they bring to, the, to their customers. We, uh, we heard uh, um, a cry of anguish today uh, from somebody who said that his boxes are under stress in a frozen warehouse, that the, gum, the glue comes off. Now, the fact is that adhesives are available, indeed have been available for a while, where you can, use, you can store and use them at sub -20, minus 20 Celsius uh, environments, and they work pretty well. And I can tell you where you have seen them being used. The cartons that I used for, uh, for ice cream, for frozen foods, for frozen shrimp. So this is not new technology. It is just that it hasn't been used in this specific environment. It hasn't been available to you, but the technology is available. You need to know where to go. You need to know whom to ask. Um, an, interesting, uh, an interesting opportunity that we have seen brought to us to our customers frequently is the need for tamper evidence. Tampering and pilfering of products has become a real problem in India. Whether you're making drugs and pharmaceuticals, whether you're making consumer goods, whether you're making sandals, shoes, tampering is a problem. You get uh, 20 pieces of shoes in a, in a case at the time it leaves the factory. When it reaches the warehouse, there are 19. So there are solutions that your industry can take to your customers, innovative technologies, innovative solutions that give your customers these added values that they can then derive value from, and in, that, in such situations, they are in a position to differentiate you from another person, another competitor, who is only competing on price. Um, uh, my friend and customer, Mr. Patel, Manish Patel over here, uh, he uses a state-of-the-art verification system in his box-making line. Now, the, this verification system not only allows you to, to monitor the amount of adhesive that you're putting on every single box on that line, it also enables you to do a very serious data acquisition so that you have traceability. You know which carton, which case went with how much adhesive. You are able to knock out of the line automatically those that don't meet your specifications within the band that you want them to be. So these are product innovations that are available. Uh, I want to take you quickly um, through one innovative uh, initiative that um, to me appears like it holds a lot of promise. And that is what you can do or what your industry can do in what I call the farm to fork chain. What percentage of food is wasted in India? The, the number that you will get will depend upon who you're talking to. And uh, I have seen estimates ranging from as low as 18% to as high as 50%. And the, the truth is probably somewhere in between. 
uh, the specific number of how much is wasted is not relevant. It's not material to this discussion. However, suffice it to say that there is a lot of food that we are wasting in this country. From the farm to folk, beyond the folk there is even more waste. Leave that aside. But let's say that we are wasting somewhere in the region of about 35% of the food that we produce even before it lands on your table. That's a full one-third of our production. And we really have to do something to stop that. <clears throat> now, this industry has an enormous opportunity to reduce some of this waste and create a massive business opportunity for yourselves. And to benefit by creating new applications for your products. Um, if you look at the way food or the uh, farm pro produce, whether it is vegetables or fruits and so on, how they are transported or how they are moved from the field all the way to, your fo to the table, it's, it would not look something like this. The product is, the produce is harvested in the field. It is carried to the village in carts. Perhaps it is sorted over there. Then it is carried to what is called the mandi in a tractor perhaps in, a, in another cart. Then it is carried to the wholesale market, which might be a long distance away, 100 kilometers away, in the, on the bed of a truck. Then it is carried to the retail market. Then it is carried to the kitchen. And then it is prepared. I can absolutely assure you that everybody in this room, barring those who have come from overseas, have probably seen this, uh, witnessed the sight of a couple of workmen sitting on a truck full of vegetables, on the vegetables, sleeping, as this, as this truck goes on bouncing on our beautiful roads. You have seen it, admit it. Okay. Now, what happens as a consequence of that is that you have bruised and battered vegetables that land up in the, in the retail outlet, and nobody is willing to pay a good price for it. So, Way back in 2003, I had proposed a solution to some leading, uh, some leaders in, in this industry of a process that might mitigate this problem a bit. And this is actually really simple. You take corrugated blanks of standard design, and these are shipped flat to individual farms. You ship it to the farm, okay? Then you erect it at site, you pack the, the produce at site, that is at the farm, not in the, not in the village, not in the mandi, at the farm, where it is plucked off the, off the plant. And then you stack them on the bed of a tractor and trailer, the rest, of the, the rest of the chain remains the same. I think you know the product that I'm talking about is this one. Okay, this is not rocket science, it has been done before, successfully used all over the world, I think what I am seeing in India today is that this is beginning to get used in some industries such as grape and so on. However, it is still not at the farm. It is being, the grapes are being packed at what's called a pack house. And by the time the grapes come from the farm to the pack house, some damage has already occurred. So here are some, these are some things that you need to look at as an industry, because uh, I think that there is enormous scope for innovative solutions, and this is only one example, there are many, many more like this. What you need is an innovative mindset, the willingness to evaluate and take calculated risks, and the, and the desire to differentiate. So in conclusion, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, when you are selling undifferentiated product, you are taking, you are putting a brick on the, on the development of this industry. As you sell, selling undifferentiated products is not the way forward for you. <clears throat> there are many opportunities of innovation, of, for innovative products. If we are going to develop the, the capabilities of our manufacturing industries, of our agricultural um, industry, however, at the bottom of all of them is innovation. You need to identify the differentiated products and the growth opportunities that they offer will be immense. I thank you for your attention.